Hey, how's it going? This is Ralph, and in this video, I wanted to show you how you might create a layout like this. So one of your classmates sketched this up for their um, uh, wireframe for a potential homepage, and it's got a very distinctive grid layout. And so I wanted to show you something that I will probably show you later in the term now, and that's CSS grid. It's pretty similar to CSS Flexbox, and there's a couple of shared properties between Flexbox and Grid, but Grid is a little different. Um, I'll try to use these terms later on, but Flexbox is a one-dimensional um, layout. Everything is in a row. Now, granted, things can wrap and go underneath, so it looks like it's two-dimensional, but Flexbox, at its heart, is a one-dimensional layout tool. Whereas CSS Grid is a two-dimensional layout tool. We can control the width and the height. And since this particular layout had some pretty interesting um, but very kind of distinctive look to it, and I'm, by the way, I'm focusing on the five boxes here, not necessarily the uh, call to action uh, contact button. But um, yeah, I, wanted, I just want to show you how to create something like this. So I'm going to create five boxes arranged in this pattern. They're going to be very neat and aligned and organized. And we're going to use CSS grid for that. So let's get to it. Um, I do have my page opened. It is currently blank. And here's my code. It has got nothing terribly exciting except, of course, for a lovely tan background color. And of course, my reset rule, which we always want to use. First for the HTML. I am going to create a div with class equals grid1. Within this div, I'm going to create five interior divs. Okay, so because our layout happens to have five distinct boxes, that's why I'm using five distinct divs here inside of grid1. Let's get to it. So dot grid1. First thing I'm going to do is I will give it a border, four pixels solid and brown so we can see it. So let's go ahead and jump over to our page, and there it is. It's right up there at the top. Let's see. Let's go ahead and set the width of this to be 80 VWs, okay, 80% of the viewport width. That's good. And I'm going to give it a margin of 80 pixels top and bottom, auto left and right. And I'm going to give it a min height of 70 SVHs, small viewport heights. And that's going to give us a nice noticeable box right there on the middle of the screen. Okay, so far that's nothing terribly new. I might be doing a few things that are unfamiliar. I think I've shown them all before in class, but maybe now it seems a little bit scary because I'm just kind of typing them relatively quickly. But otherwise, I'm giving this width, which is not completely wide. I'm centering this block horizontally on the page. And, uh, oh, true, I'm also giving it 80 pixels top and bottom so it's not pushed up right next to the top. And I'm giving it a min height of 70% of the viewport height. So that way it kind of almost fills up the screen. So. All right, so all that's pretty good. Next order of business is I'm going to jump down here real quick. Dot grid one child div. The divs within my grid. And for these, I'm also going to give them a border, which is four pixels solid and brown. So I can visualize them. Look how they're all scrunched up next to each other. That's exactly normal. No worries there. Let's see, I'm going to head back to my grid one. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give it a padding of eight pixels. Now, padding is inside of the border, so that creates that space just inside. But pretty soon, you'll see that not really matter much when I uh, get rid of the exterior border. Okay, now for the fun part. Display grid. There we go. Makes this a grid container or grid parent. Technically, grid container, uh, but grid parent is a good word, too, because we can refer to the parent as the container and the children as the interior. And look, things are already starting to look a little different, maybe. Look how the height has established. So when you make a grid parent, the children will expand in height 
based on the boundaries of the parent. So that was kind of nice. Uh, remember, if I didn't have this, if this was just the whole thing was commented out, there we go. They all whoop, shrink up with each other. Now let's see. I'll just undo, undo. There we go. Back to that. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is establish the overall structure of this grid. Now this grid, go with me on this one, has four columns and two rows. Four columns and two rows because this middle one here is taking up two columns of space. So I'm picturing this. I could be a little wrong too because I haven't talked to the student about this. Um, I see one column for the box on the top left, two columns for this middle box, one column for this one. Now the third box on the far right though is taking up two rows. Interesting. And the, oh, and then, oops, let's go back. And the one down here, lower left, is taking up two columns, and then we have a one column down there. Okay, so this is what we write. Display grid, oops, I'm doing that wrong. It is, um, grid template columns. And this is the way I'm going to write it. 1FR, 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 1FR. I could have written this with a repeat function, but this is perfectly fine. Technically, I could have written this. Could I have just done this? Yeah, yeah, I think this is, this is a good way to write it. Basically, FR stands for fractional unit. So by writing grid template columns and then writing 1FR four times, that is basically saying, hey, I just want this four times. Um, and I'm going to go right down here, grid template rows, and I'm going to do 1FR, 1FR, two fractional units. So that's four columns and two rows. There we go. Look at that. Four columns across, two rows going down. Interesting. I know things look a little bit messy, but we can clean it up a, a tad with a gap of eight pixels. Now I have a padding of eight pixels that goes around the outside of these interior divs. But a gap of eight pixels will give me the space right in the inside. So now everything is spaced very, very nicely together. So much so that I might decide that I no longer need the border for the exterior grid one. And I no longer need the padding of the exterior grid one. And now I've got um, five nice, neat little boxes positioned there. Four columns, two rows, not too shabby. And of course, by the way, if I had three more divs in there, let me show you that. What if I had three more divs? Look like that. I got a nice little uh, grouping of eight. Very easy to do. But we don't want eight. Let's get rid of those. Let's go back to our, uh, our five interior divs. Okay, what else can we do here? Um, I think I'm okay with this phase. Now what I want to do is I want to style the individual... Um, grid items, the grid kids, we like to call them. So I'm going to write it this way, dot grid one, angle bracket div, colon, nth child, parentheses one. So this would be the first one. And then I could repeat this process for all the others. In fact, I will go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy this, two, three, four, five. And we technically won't need all of these, but I'm going to keep them on there anyway, just so you can see them four and number five. Oops, that's not a five at all. There's a five. Okay, so based on the student template, this first one's pretty normal. It's not doing anything. It's just a normal block. So I don't have to really worry about that so much. So I'm going to jump right on down to give nth child number two. And for this one, I'm going to write grid column. And I think I'm just going to do span two because I want it to stretch over and take up two. Look at that, it just stretches right on over. That's the second one there. Now my third one is supposed to span two rows. So I'm gonna go to my third one and write grid row. Is it grid row or just grid rows? I think just grid row. Um, also span two, let's see what that does. There we go, stretches right on down. And then let's see, down in the second row, so let's say one, two, three, Number four, I think, is supposed to span two columns. So we can actually just do the thing, same thing we did before. Grid column span two. And that stretches across, and there we go, and the fourth one is perfectly fine. And I think you would agree that we're starting to get this layout, just like what the uh, student was kind of thinking with their wireframe. So, yeah, that's it. And, of course, you could put different things in here. 
and put in the content you want to have in there, whatever it happens to be, whether it's a photo background or whether it's this or whether it's that or whether it's the other thing. Um, put in all the content that you want. Keep those all organized. Now, because it can get a little bit distracting, you could go through and put in like class names, like class equals grid item one. Yeah, I'll do something like that. Check this out. I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to copy. This could be a smarter way to do this. Four, three, two, and one is already good. And then for your CSS, if, it, if this seemed confusing, you could just write it this way. Dot grid item one. Yeah, that does look a lot nicer, right? And I'll just do a couple of these. Um, dot grid item dash two. And it's still going to characteristics that we want because I'm just changing out the class names. I'm giving them individual classes. Let's do one more. Grid item dash three. There we go. So there's our grid layout. And this is uh, what we used to create it. So the HTML is pretty simple looking. And then for the CSS, the real trick is on the parent, the container, we do our display grid, and then we set up the basic dimensions of our grid, the columns that we want, and then the rows that we want, any gap, any space inside is good. And then of course we spend time working with those individual items in order to establish their characteristics. Are they spanning multiple columns? Are they spanning multiple rows? and stuff like that. Okay, well that's all I wanted to show you. And if you uh, are making a grid layout, there you go, that's the way to do it. Bye.